Hi everybody and welcome to Upstairs in the Yoga House. Today we're going to be doing a short little core activation. Let's call it a workout, but we're going to use yoga postures. So those of you who have a yoga practice, I would advise you embed this into your existing daily practice because core strength is so amazing for the overall ease and health in the body. So they say we're only as strong as our weakest link. For most of us, the abdominals, the bum, the side waist, the pelvic muscles become a little bit lax and or stiff. So we can work into a little bit of core strength every day. You can't overdose on core strengthening stuff, right? It's a maintenance of health that we're looking at here. So making sure that you have a comfortable place with a flat surface underneath you. You don't even need a yoga mat for this little session. So just use what you have and come join me in a supine position lying on your back. So we're gonna start just to get ourselves into a good position so that the spine is safe, namely the lumbar spine in this case. So the bit of your spine that is concerned with your kidneys and the back of your waist. So just lifting your shoulder blades off the floor and your head off the floor. Soles of the feet will be on the ground. Bend your knees and just engage your tummy. Just encourage your tummy to go down to the front of your lumbar spine and encourage your lumbar spine to go down and imprint itself on the ground. We're just gonna hold here. So let's take the hands to the thighs. If this is feeling too much already, hold on to the backs of your thighs so you have a little grip there and you're using your biceps as a little assistant to help you if the core isn't yet feeling strong. And we'll just breathe here. Now you'll notice that the breath is a little harder to keep deep. So as best you can, recruit the sides of your ribs so that you can inhale wide, keep your tummy strong. And then exhale, let your side ribs narrow and come together. Now, if you feel the tips of the shoulder blades going back down, just peel a few vertebrae off the ground. You can hear the little wobble in my voice there. There's a lot of activation going on. If you feel that your neck muscles are doing the work instead of your belly muscles, then just take a hand to the back of your head not to haul you up, you understand, but to actually take the weight of your head into the hand rather than your neck doing all the work. So from there, we're gonna lift the left leg, take the right hand over to the outside of the left thigh and hold on to the outside of the left thigh with the left hand as well. Now it's easy peasy to get the right shoulder blade off the floor, you'll feel that, but we're trying to get the left shoulder blade off the floor as well. Breathing here, again in the same way, wide into the ribs as you inhale, narrow the rib cage as you exhale. We're keeping the back of the waist on the floor the whole time for this session. You can plantar flex the left foot as I'm doing now, or if that gives you crampiness, dorsiflex instead. There's a bonus crack there, little click. Now from there, let go of the right hand and start to lean to the left and slightly further up on the exhale. Come back to where you were, tiny movements. Exhale, inhale. Exhale, inhale. Exhale, inhale. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We'll just do 100. Only joking, one more and then come back. So take your left foot to the ground, extending your right leg up. Take hold outside of that right thigh. Peel both shoulder blades off the ground. Draw the lower belly into the lower back, lower back into the floor, and then let go with that left hand. <clears throat> Excuse me, and then up we go. Exhale, inhale, two. Exhale to come up, really contract the belly muscles. Don't forget your little inhales, very important. Four left. Two. One, good, taking that foot back down onto the ground. Now we're gonna keep in this contraction, but just take the hands behind the head, just to give yourself a little rest. We're not gonna come all the way down. So you might feel a little burn, as they say, that's okay. Really cultivating that good steady breath into the side ribs, inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the nose. Now 
Good. Now we're going to interlace the fingers, point the index fingers forwards and straighten the legs out. You don't need to see my shins and feet for this. My legs are straight. This is called Chaki Chalasana. It's one of my favorite yoga poses for the core strength. So we're going to work in a sort of a churning way. This is what the name of the posture means. And so we're going to go round, but it's best to do this when you hold the breath out. So we're taking a big breath in now, big breath out through the nose. Now hold the breath and we're going to do nine circles in one direction. Good. Inhale. Exhale. Hold the breath out and then nine circles in the other direction. Good. Oh. And then rest your head on the ground. We'll do a little easy bridge. Just lifting up and let your breath come back to normal. Now, normally in yoga, we wouldn't hold the breath out while we're doing an asana, a posture. But for that particular one, you have much more access to doing the movement smoothly and quickly. So you're not prolonging the agony while your lungs are completely empty and you have access to real strong contraction in the abdominals. Good, and then we're gonna come back down. Now lifting your right knee up, have your thigh pretty vertical and we'll push the right hand into the thigh, but we're pushing the knee back into the right hand in equal measure. So we're not trying to do this or this for that matter, right? Thigh stays vertical. So knee directly over hip socket. And then from there, we're going to take hold of the back of the head with the left hand and then lift up. So your shoulder blades are off the ground for this and then extend that left leg Extend the left arm and then exhale, touch, hand to foot or towards foot. Inhale, extend, exhale, touch. Meanwhile, you're pushing this right hand into that right knee. X. Good, find a breath rhythm that suits you. I was gonna call it there, inhale, exhale, but find what suits you actually, because there'll be a different feeling in everyone's body. Now, the more you press that right hand into the lower right thigh, obviously the more you'll feel. Keep your shoulder blades off the floor if you can. Again, if it's too much for the neck, if your neck is doing the work instead of your abs, take your hand behind the head and just move the leg. Good, and then hold on to the backs of the thighs. Let your head come down. And we'll just take a little rock and roll from side to side. That's pretty hefty. Now you can make that stronger, obviously, by pushing the hand more fervently into the top of the knee there. You feel more muscles engaged. So you're the master or the mastress of this little process here. Okay, we go to the other side. So lifting that left leg, thigh is vertical, push the left hand into the top of the left thigh, and then we'll extend that right leg, right arm back, and then touch, hand to foot, arm back, hand to foot, arm back. Now keep rolling the tips of your shoulder blades off the ground. That's vital here. This is what's going to really target the muscles that usually get lax in our bodies. Meanwhile, of course, the back of the waist is still on the ground. So generally in yoga, we'd inhale on an extension. This is an extension. However, I like to exhale on this extension. Some of you will know why. So as we extend the arm and the leg away from the center line, they become levers that are heavy. So we need more contraction to hold those heavy weights. It's like resisting training, but you're using resistance training, but you're using your own body. So I would exhale here and inhale here. However, it mightn't seem logical for you. So just find what is good for you. It could be that you inhale here and exhale here. Meanwhile, you're pushing that left hand into the top of the knee. Let's do a few more. My father said a few meant five or nine. So let's go nine, of course. Six, seven, 
eight, nine. Oh, I can feel the sweat coming. Okay, so holding on to the back of the thighs, let your head rest, let your neck rest, and rock from side to side. Good, okay, now really nestle in to the ground with the back of your waist. Really get strong there, pushing down. And we lift the legs straight up. Now, if you haven't got the hamstring flexibility for this, that's okay, bend the knees and then just lift the thighs. And then either way, we'll start to bring those knees towards us, whether they're straight or bent. And then from there, taking the hands towards the toes or just simply up in a vertical position and then start to reach maybe the wrists towards the toes and then breathing there. Now maybe getting the lower arms towards the toes and start to lift your sacrum. It's a little bit of a balance. Good, and releasing down, we'll come into easy bridge just to stretch that out a little. A lot of people dread and avoid core work, but honestly, it's a fast track to empowerment. I do credit my yoga practice for my core strength. It's amazing, it's great for your digestion, it's great for your spinal protection, it just is the middle of you. So when it is strong, everything is strong. You'll find much more ease of movement when your core is strong. So it's well worth doing daily if you can. Obviously, ladies, if you're on days one, two, three, or four of your moon cycle, it can be a bit uncomfortable. So just do the ones that feel okay on those days. And then slowly we'll come down. Now, we'll take the hands to the floor, just help yourself up gently. And then we're going to work into just three stages of holding, working into a bit of endurance. So rather than reps, we're holding for this last little segment. So we'll take the hands forwards. You can hold onto your knees or onto the backs of your thighs, or you can take the arms forwards. Now from there, we're just going to lean onto where the tailbone meets the sacrum. The back is rounded, holding there, shoulders down. If you need that extra support, you're holding onto your knees. Good, inhale to come back up, straighten your back. And then exhale, we'll come down to the lower back. So you're on your lumbar. You can hold on to your britches, your thighs, whatever feels good or you can take the arms forwards. Good, and then start to come up, straighten your back, and then we'll come back down, a little bit further this time, onto the lower back, but also onto the base ribs. So the shoulder blades are still off the ground, you're just down a little further. Again, draw the front of your core down to the back of your core, back of the core down to the ground. and then slowly come up with control. Let's do that one more time. Exhale, down onto where the sacrum meets the coccyx. So down onto where the, back, the lower back of your hips meets your tailbone. Now, if it feels comfortable for you, maybe lift a leg, you can keep it bent. And you can hold on there if you need some extra support. Maybe lift two legs. If not, keep the feet or the foot down. Inhale back up, straighten into your back, and then exhale, roll down onto where the top of your sacrum meets your lumbar spine. 
Maybe lift a leg or two. Maybe straighten the legs. And then coming up, straighten into your back. And then last one, rolling down. <clears throat> All the way down now, onto the lumbar, but also onto the lower ribs, but you're still keeping the tip of the shoulder blade off the floor. Squeeze the tummy down. Maybe lift a leg. Maybe lift both legs. Maybe straighten the legs, but only keep the lumbar spine on the ground. If you're feeling it, Take the arms back too, but keep your shoulder blades off the floor. Good, and then we'll rock up to sit. Good. Okay, hopefully you enjoyed that. I'm hoping that it felt effective for you. If it didn't, go back to the start, press play again. Two rounds of something is always going to give you a slightly different sensation. Not only does your brain know what's happening, but also your muscles are a little bit more familiar and they're going to come into line a little bit more effectively. So wishing you all a great day, guys. Thank you for being with me here in the yoga house. Namaste.